This episode of Ghoulish is brought to you by groceries. Uh, go to your local grocery store and uh, upon checkout say discount code Ghoulish, please. And uh, the, the cash yield will give you a discounted rate on uh, any groceries you buy. Uh, don't believe me? Good. Uh, on today's episode of Ghoulish with uh, me, Max Booth, a host, I have uh, a toothache, and I I don't want to keep talking in this intro, so let's get it done quick. I am talking to Christopher Triana about his latest book that he wrote with Ryan Helding titled The Night Stockholds, which is about... Uh, you know, uh, people who work the night shift at a grocery store. They, uh, they, they, they stock in the night, which is a job both myself and Christopher have plenty of experience with. And that's what we talk about in this episode. That's right. You, uh, you downloaded a spooky podcast to talk about stocking groceries at a grocery store. That's the whole episode. That's what we're talking about. So, I don't know. Does that sound good to you? I, I think it does. It's a pretty fun conversation. Again, my mouth is killing me. I'm going to I'm gonna hang up the phone now. The phone? That's right. I uh, do this podcast into a, te- into a telephone. That's how I record. Uh, beep, bloop. Beep, beep, bop, boop, bop, bop. Beep, 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 boop. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, going to be the only uh, spooky podcast with an episode dedicated to uh, stocking groceries. Yes. <laughs> How long have you been involved in uh, night stocking? On and off, I've worked in grocery stores for many years, uh, probably about 20 years, but on and off, you know, like, yeah, I've been a grocery store manager. Uh, when I was younger, I was just a, a stock boy. Um, and then I've had periods where, you know, I was dog training for years and stuff like that, and I didn't do the grocery thing. So it was kind of like a back and forth. What do you do now? Um, I just write, but then I do uh, part-time work uh, as well. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, when you were, like, managing, did you feel like, oh, man, I'm the enemy now? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I struggled with that because I have a hard time um, – uh, like I can manage people and lead them, but I have a hard time being a dick, you know, about stuff that like that my upper bosses think is important that I think is stupid, you know, and I'm like, I'm not going to pressure people to do this crap. It's stupid. You know, I did. Uh, I did eight months uh, stocking a well-known uh, establishment that begins with a W and uh, I did the night shift and. I had some managers who were just complete dickheads, but then I had some who were like, "Hey, this is this is all bullshit anyway." But can you please just do this so the other guy doesn't get mad at me? Yeah, that's the kind of boss I was. I was yeah. like that. I was like, "Yeah, I know this is bullshit, but let's just do it and get it done." Yeah, yeah. You know? it's always good when like everybody's on the same team of this job means nothing, but we also need to pay like a rent, so let's just get yeah, through yeah. it. Exactly. That's that's what it is. Like the people that take it way too seriously. I just I don't understand those people. I'm like, it's a grocery store. You know, <laughs> calm the fuck down. You know, we sell bananas. You know, it's not uh, it's you know, no one's going to die here. This is not, you know, uh, uh, you know, like a, we're not surgeons. Like you don't need to be <laughs> calling and texting me at home like on my day off about, you know, a watermelon display or something. It's like just they can they can wait you know now the uh the grocery stores you will employ at will they open the whole time at night or was it shut down and you would go in and stock with no customers around well you it depended like i worked at several different stores in different positions over the years and when i was a stock boy some some jobs like we would come in really early like three or four in the morning and stock yeah. stuff and then the store would open at say eight o'clock mm-hmm. and i would go home around 10 or 11 you know so it'd be like a mixture uh but then you know uh, other jobs you know it would just be like you know we would get there at say six in the morning and then open at eight and you know so it just it varied you know yeah yeah gotcha any like odd customer incidents that you can remember now like anything like Oh, oh, like, God, yeah, yeah, let's get into that. I mean, that's always the best part of talking about old jobs. It's like the crazy ass fucking people you've encountered. 
Oh God. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, it's just so, so many, um, uh, like, you know, I had, I've had, I've had to, you know, call the cops and have trespassing warrants taken out on them. Like, you know, it, they weren't the funniest stories to tell. They were just guys that were usually, it was usually guys that were very inappropriate with, uh, some of the women who worked there. Oh God. Okay. Um, you know, stuff like that, you know, customers that like got really out of line and being yeah. in the manager and I had, I had to deal with all of this shit. And that's the thing when you're the manager of a store is you have to deal with every single whiny, pissy customer who complains about stuff that doesn't matter. You got to deal with all the Karens and, and all of that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've had, I've had people, scream at oh, i had this one woman i remember this this was at, like absolutely hilarious to me this woman came in and uh, like the store was cl closed at like nine o'clock and so like we had like a hot bar where people could get you know pizza and uh you know other hot things you know hot chicken and stuff and it was you know it was like 20 minutes to closing and we always closed down the hot bar like an hour before closing because why would we have a full hot bar and then throw out all of that food when we close you know it's it's wasteful and stupid and she came in 20 minutes before closing and she was literally screaming because we didn't have anything out there she's like i want to know why you don't have any food out and i don't want to hear any of your fucking excuses and i was like you can get the fuck out how about that <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out and don't ever come back you know? i love like the caster molds who say shit like i want to know explain this to me and then they also say don't give me any fucking excuses it's like well what yeah. do you want from me yeah right <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had to like yell at someone like that, or like even like physically get physical at someone? Never physical, uh, but I have had to like raise my voice and yeah. you know call the cops and stuff like that. I never had anyone throw a punch at me or anything, but um, uh, there was definitely some shouting matches, you know, where yeah. like people were just screaming at me and I just had to yell over them. I'd be like, "Get the hell out of my store and just mm -hmm. get out now." And that's one of the problems I always had as a manager is, is like, I would just start to get mad and you're not supposed to get mad. And I would anyway. And I yeah. would just like start to go off and <laughs> like, explain myself later. You know? <laughs> I had that issue when I was at the, uh, the hotel job because after so long, I, I just stopped giving a shit. And yeah. the moment anyone got like pissy with me, I would just get really pissy with them. And I just, <laughs> I stopped doing the whole like oh i apologize for whatever will happen i just i right. made a rule to myself not to apologize for anything and yeah, just to, yeah. yeah and nothing i mean it ended up being pretty good because most of the time like if they say oh i'm gonna i'm gonna call culprit i'm gonna get you filed i will a they don't do it and b nobody gives a shit anyway <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yep yeah, I was a, absolutely. I was in some physical things like at the hotel job, but not when I was stocking sh uh, stocking groceries and stuff like that. Mm. I should say uh, when I was stocking stuff, I was mostly on the uh, the pet food side, so I handled like the pet section yeah. of the shop. And man, the one it, the pay was awful, but there's a few mm. things I do miss about it and like one of them was it was an amazing uh exercise i was in really good shape yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it's just non-stop sweating lifting heavy things and yeah, uh constantly moving. yeah and also like just some of the employees that you would get to know was like you can make them some really good friends doing a shitty job together i think yeah no you definitely can yeah there's that uh camaraderie uh when you uh, commiserate you know yeah um yeah and you definitely keep fit man like uh you know when i was uh managing you know grocery store i i tracked it on my phone and i i walked uh 11 miles a day Jeez. uh just walking around and doing stuff all day long uh you know because you work like nine hours you're there uh and yeah it was that was fine. I didn't mind the, the physical part, but this just the mental torture of being there mm -hmm. nine hours a day. It was just like absolutely grueling and, and stupid too, where it's just like, there is no reason for people to have to be working in the store that many hours, you know, like they've yeah. done studies on this where it's like, you know, these companies that say, okay, managers, you have to work 50 hours. It's like, if the work is done and things are, it's like, now you're just keeping us here for no real reason, you yeah. know? You know, it's like there's another manager here to do the closing shift. I did the opening shift, whatever it is. I should just be able to go. You know, everything is done. You know, it's yeah. like 
the amount of time does not equate the amount of work that you do for what you're paid, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's just stupid corporate America. You know? I can definitely recall times and like I would finish my uh, my load, like my, my few pallets I had to get stocked and then it would be like only 5 a.m. and I don't clock out till like 7 a.m. And they yeah. would go, oh, uh, uh, go go zone, go make everything neat because they don't know what to have you right. do once you finish. It's yeah. like, just let me right. go home. Right. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they do. They're like, well, you know, go sweep or yeah, go, go, go front and face, straighten the can so they all face the front. You know, like yeah, yeah it's just we it's called just that uh, at the place I looked at. We called that zoning. We'll be make everything zoning. Yeah, and I always yeah. hated it because like the moment you would get a thing clean, like completely uh, nice looking, some asshole get a uh, customer would walk by and just pluck yep, something, absolutely. and there's no point. Absolutely. There's no point in it. Yeah. It's a good. Yeah. It's a good way to propel you for life. I think. <laughs> it kind of is. Yeah. It's, it's just like. Yeah. It's like the moment you dust, you know, the the process of having it dust again it immediately starts. It's that same kind of thing, you know. Uh, it's just like a never ending. But uh, yeah, we like I've worked in because I've lived all up and down the East Coast, and it it was funny. It was kind of a regional thing where. Uh, like what that was called, like some places it was called fronting or it was called uh, blocking or front or front and face. You know, you'd pull it to the front and you'd face the label forward, you know. Yeah, uh, every place is different. Did you uh, cheat a lot? I know I would. Instead of like doing every single can, I would just make the front look like it was neat. And behind <laughs> it was just fucking an empty <laughs> abyss. <laughs> I think most places do do that, though, just yeah. at the same time, where like the rule is usually just two, two cans like to the front, two boxes to the yeah. front and the rest in the back, you know, as long as it's not all snaked in there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the higher my position was, the better job i did because you know i felt like i had to but yeah when i was younger and uh i I didn't give a flying fuck yeah i would you know cut corners and everything um but uh oh god here's here's one that i that i like because this has stuck with me for like 20 years uh i worked in i worked in tallahassee at, at a grocery store uh and tallahassee is technically florida but it's really just southern alabama it's it's incredibly redneck there yeah and um and so, do you know this stuff? Like, it's not, it's not a juice, but it's just kind of like a Kool Aid. It's just like fruit drink or <laughs> no. grape drink. Well, okay. yeah, it's just like it's just like a already made Kool Aid. Okay. Know? Yeah. Uh, and it and it was like super cheap. It was like store brand, and it would come in a milk carton jug, uh, and it was just disgusting, like you know, corn syrup crap. Right. Um, and whenever it would show up, it would show up in crates like a, you know, four, like milk crates. But they were always like sticky, like stuck together. Like when it was on the conveyor and the and the fluid was being, you know, uh, pushed into it, it just kind of ran over. So it was always sticky. And we would put it on the shelf. Uh, and like then there'd be like these rings of like syrupy goo that we could never get off because it was just you know, coagulated and everything. Um, so anyway... <clears throat> Yeah, we uh, one of the guys I worked there, this this big redneck guy, he just called it belly wash. What's his name for it? <laughs> He's like, oh, we gotta put up the belly wash, you know. <laughs> Don't know why, but we all thought it was great and funny, and so we all called it belly wash. And so one day, this this kid, uh, you know, who had started working there or whatever, um, I guess a customer was looking for one of them. So he gets on the page and he's like. Uh, can we get more belly wash? <laughs> and we're all just dying laughing because like he didn't like know any better, wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah, you know? he's like, can we get more belly wash? And I... <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty good. It was pretty good. What's the biggest uh, mess you ever saw? Like the biggest spill? Oh, jeez. Uh... Uh, one night I was doing inventory and um, and uh, 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 my buddy Mike, who I'm still friends with, uh, he was working there. And uh, th- there was this whole shelf. It was you know like several shelves on a, like an end cap display and it was filled with shampoo and conditioner. It was like this big display of it. And something happened. Uh, we never really found out what was wrong, but he was just counting stuff. And all of a sudden like the top shelf fell and it created a domino effect 
where everything else fell, and all that shampoo and conditioner just like went flying at him, knocked him down. Luckily, he was fine, uh, but uh, and it just it was like no joke, hundreds of shampoo bottles all over the place. Most of them didn't break though, but it was just it took forever to collect them all and clean it all up. Uh, yeah, it was an absolutely massive disaster. It's all. It's always the goddamn end caps, huh? Oh, always. Yeah, yeah. My, always. mine also yeah. was an end cap. It was those uh, giant jaws of pickles. The whole thing collapsed, and every everyone broke, and it uh, smelled God. so bad. Yeah, that's awful. Yeah. I, pickles are evil. I hate those damn things. So, yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty bad. Yeah. It was <laughs> awful. It was nauseating. Uh, like, on the pet food side of things, usually uh, what would happen is, like, when they will, uh, when, when I would like open the, what is it called? Like saran wrap, the plastic that holds them on the pallet. When you cut those open, you always end up cutting open a fucking bag of food. Yeah. And just all absolutely. over the place. Always. Yeah. yeah always. Always. Um, yeah. What, I'm drawing a blank now. What are those machines that we, you keep in the back to uh, crush a cold build? What are, what are those? Uh, a baler. A baler. Yeah. You have a look at those when you were doing those shifts and think, what would happen if I just went inside and let it crush me? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, it, in fact, uh, uh, we might want to tell people the reason we're talking about this is I have a book called. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't promote might, books. Be like, why are they talking about this? Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> in the book, uh, someone is crushed in a baler. Uh, oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah. So I've definitely thought about that. Absolutely. I did. <laughs> I did plan on getting to the book, and I would have. Ta- yeah. I'm going to talk about it in the intro as well that I do separately. But let's go ahead oh, okay. and get to the book. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought we were just jumping right in. Like, like we're going to be like, what the fuck is this? Like, do I have a long show? I thought this was about horror and books. <laughs> is this like the, you know, the grocery man podcast? I would listen to that, and maybe we should begin it. I don't know. Maybe that's a new show we got to do, yeah. The Grocery Man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a uh, pornographic movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can make that as well. We could. We could. Yeah. All sorts of good plans here. <laughs> Let's talk about You're this book. <laughs> Give me the uh, the pitch on this book. Uh, okay, yeah. It's called The Night Stalkers, uh, as in stocking shelves. Uh, and it's a little pun on the night stalker, Richard Ramirez. You know, it's uh, a little joke on that uh, because it's about a uh, satanic grocery store that uh, literally tries to kill the competition. Uh, I wrote this book with uh, a fellow author, Ryan Harding, uh, who's known for his extreme horror works. Uh, and he also has experience working in a grocery store. And so we were like, let's write one where it's all of these machines in a grocery store that are used as the killing tools like the baler or the deli slicer like someone's head gets pushed into the deli slicer and they're like pushing it back and forth cutting little (laughs) slices off of face meat you know yeah Uh, and it's a horror comedy uh you know because you know like it's rival grocery stores and the one that's satanic is called devil's food uh and the the other one across the street is just called freshway it's like a generic grocery sounding name uh, but they're doing an overnight that night, and the devil's food people come and like lay siege upon them. So it's like this assault on precinct thirteen, but it's oh. like, but it's like in a grocery store, you know. So fuck, that sounds so good. I hate myself for not having time to read it before this podcast, but I'm definitely going to because that sounds like a blast. <laughs> it's it's very it's very gory and very fun. Um, and uh, and there's also like there's a big theme of death metal in it as well because he and I both grew up really being into death metal. So like every chapter is named after a death metal song, and like the the Devil's Food team are all like death metal heads and everything. Uh, takes place in 1992, which was also a big year for American death metal, and uh, so that's a big theme running. How into. how did you land on 1992? Because of the music? Yeah, because of the the music, like tie-in uh that was a big year for american death metal uh so we wanted to, to kind of touch on that okay uh not, not that the book is gets super into the history of death metal or anything like that um but we also thought it would be a lot easier to do this story uh if no one had cell phones <laughs> you know yeah because it's like all these people being rushed upon by other people and the cell phone thing would just make it 
kind yeah. of complicated. We also wanted to uh, just kind of do a fun throwback to the 90s and have there's a lot of like 90s uh, nostalgia in there and references in there. So it was just kind of fun to make it that period piece. Oh, cool. Yeah, I love uh, 90s uh, fiction. Like you don't like everyone's always like, ah, the 80s. But whenever you see like a movie or read a book that takes place in the 90s, it's pretty uh pretty fun i say that but don't ask me to give you an example of something else because i have nothing in mind it's just a blank statement that seems it's, true it sounds smart <laughs> yeah <laughs> so when you say this grocery store is satanic we'll be talking about like the employees management everybody involved everything. yeah what? everything what do Go they ahead. sell at this grocery store like, oh, they, they sell they like sell... a devil snacks or what yeah, well, I mean, it's like they sell food, but they're they're like you know also like killing people and like selling the meat you know of the people and they're performing uh, satanic rituals to make this like a really successful company and like they like literally kill the competition. <laughs> it's yeah, uh, so. it gives me some strong Bentley Little vibes. Yeah, that like the store. Yeah, yeah that kind of it's kind of has that a little bit in a way. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, but it's uh, yeah, like the, the managers, the regional managers, like they're all Satanists and uh, and killers and cannibals and uh, all of that. So for some reason, that's reminding me of something when I used to do my uh, night job at the grocery store. We would sometimes go to IHOP on a lunch break, and they had this uh, guy who would always be looking at the night shift at IHOP, and he had one of those fucking uh, bell code tattoos on his, across his, his throat. Like uh, what a, kind of tattoo? Uh, like a bell code, like he was scanning. Oh, it. a barcode. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> one time uh, I said, what's with that tattoo, man? He looked at me completely straight face and said, uh, everybody's a product <laughs> and just walked away. <laughs> so, that's kind of satanic. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of frightening at the very least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I forgot about that guy. He's probably dead now. Hmm. Yeah, he just think. seemed he just seemed like a guy who would die young. Yeah, yeah, with you that kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you will see someone and like ah, they won't last. Oh, absolutely! I grew up in Florida, of course. I saw them constantly. <laughs> I, I see one uh, every time I I look at my reflection. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can I'm amazed I made it this far and this long. Yeah. How did this book come about? Like, did you two just begin talking about grocery store shit? Uh, no, we, we just, uh, we were talking about maybe doing something together just, you know, for fun. Uh, and, uh, we were, we bounced off a couple of ideas and just, I don't know, they just weren't, didn't work for us. And then I had this idea, uh, of doing like a siege story at, with a grocery store, um, having, you know, spent all this time in grocery stores. And also I just kind of wanted to write that kind of story i thought it'd be fun to write something like that uh, and so i i pitched that to ryan and he really liked the idea and so he started to come up with different ideas and i think he's the one who wanted to i think he's the one who came up with the death metal idea and to put that in there because he's super into death metal um and yeah it just kind of grew from there we built up characters and uh I just kind of rolled with it yeah nice uh all the time that you've uh, been employed with grocery stores have you encountered any uh, satanic uh, stuff going on uh no i wish that, that, i mean that, that would make it a lot more interesting to go to work um I, I i probably worked with some guys that were could have been satanists as they were like extreme metal heads nice. but uh nice i was I, I was one too so i was never frightened <laughs> <laughs> the only like questionable thing that happened to me on one of those shifts was this guy came up like in a black trench coat and this is like july in texas and it's maybe 2 a.m. He wanted to know how to find A, the rope, and B, the shovels. What was go- that guy definitely killed somebody, right? Yeah. Or was getting ready to. He might yeah. have someone in the trunk. Yeah, yeah. I think about that guy all the time. I mean, I don't know. He was not propelled. <laughs> You gotta go to two different locations to get these things. You can't just get a rope and a fucking shovel at the same place. Yeah, yeah. 
that's that's uh yeah that's a dead giveaway yeah you got to kind of space those purchases out don't put them on a credit card so there's no you know record yeah yeah yeah, yeah. maybe even change outfits going from store to another yeah don't have a fucking <laughs> trench coat on yeah <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't go with that that whole thing yeah why uh how did you get st- stuck doing the night shift was that a choice um well i i I didn't do the night shift always, uh, but when I was younger, yeah, I did do a night shift um, just because the pay was a little better, because uh, no one wants to do it, and uh, yeah, but I, you know, most of the time when I did do night shifts, you know, with these other jobs, it was it was only occasional, you know, it was to do overnight inventory or to do like a deep clean on the store, or usually as a manager there would be big repairs that had to be done. And so a repair crew would have to come when the store was closed and work on the ovens or whatever it was overnight. And I would just have to sit there and, uh, you know, read or, you know, <laughs> and say I did something, but just, just sat there and read, you know. What's the uh, dumbest reason you ever saw some of the uh, lose little job? Dumbest reason. I can go now to give you time to think. Uh, we had this one kid who worked with us, and uh, it was a break time, and everybody was sitting outside smoking cigarettes, talking, and he came walking out pissed off saying he had just gotten canned. And we said, well, why? And he said, oh, well, I had this item that was broken, and when I wrote down the reason for why I was uh, sending it back, I wrote, it's fucked up. <laughs> And we laughed and made fun of him. <laughs> like, like, what did you think would happen? <laughs> this same guy also would brag about going like 95 in school zones. He was uh, not bright. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of asking to get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh. Stupidest reason someone got fired. Well, I had one that uh, that. Well, I don't. know. It's kind of a long, complicated story. So okay. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to have to get into the whole history of it. It was just kind of yeah you know, crazy. Yeah. Um, but I know I know one girl got fired because she was uh, she was driving her dad's uh, car. Yeah. And his dad, her dad, was a uh, bail bondsman. Mm-hmm. And so the car was like, had all this bail bond, like advertising all over it, you know, just like, have you been arrested bail bonds? And she always parked it right at the front of the store, like right facing the road. Yeah. And the manager like did not like that. He's like, that's not the image I want for the store. And she was like, well, my dad says I should park it there. So it's by the road so people see it. (laughs) And the manager just being a dick was because he was uh, like, he just like went off on her and made her cry. And like, she just didn't get fired. She just quit. She was like, fine, fuck you. You know, just took off. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's not cool. It's not cool, but you know. That's one of those people who takes takes it way too seriously, you yeah. know, like I'm saying, like it's just a fucking grocery store, man. Calm down. One thing I've also noticed with jobs like that is you sometimes get roped up into like a like a soap opera almost. Like everybody oh, God, begins sleeping with everybody. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. For an example, I, I think I might have told this on the podcast in the past, but who gives a shit? Uh, I didn't drive when I was working at that place. I didn't have a license yet. I was uh, 19. So this uh, guy would give me a lift, and he also was employed. We did the same shift, so it was it was easy. He would pick me up on his way to the place. And he uh, was engaged with somebody who lived in some different state. It was a long-distance relationship. And uh, at some point, he began uh, secretly uh, dating the assistant manager. And they, mm. were, they were going at it for a while, and then uh, the fiancé moved to texas so he broke up with the assistant manager and she did not like that at all she began treating his life like hell but because i was always with them because he would give me rides i also began receiving this this punishment for no reason and she would just treat both of us like shit and just give us all these un unjust duties around the place and it's just not great yeah like 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 you were just by association, you know, getting, yeah. getting low back just because you get rides with him. You know, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's definitely true, man. Um, yeah. I, 
I was a department manager, uh, and uh, this was years ago, uh, back when companies had rep, like they still have some still have them, but the, a lot of them got rid of it with the recession and everything. Uh, these companies would have their representatives come out and like talk about their product to the people who were selling it in the stores and all that. And so these reps, um, and the people that worked in the stores were very interlinked. Uh, and I worked in like a supplement department with, you know, cause I was really into bodybuilding and everything. So it was like protein, vitamins, all that. Um, and the, the, the reps, a lot of them were these attractive women who would like flirt with you, just trying to get you to buy more stuff, you know? And I was just like, I was onto it, you know, but then some of them, I actually did end up getting involved with. Oh, no. <laughs> I ended up having several affairs with these reps uh, and got in trouble for it, like when it was found out. And I was I was nearly fired for it because I was I was going to bed with all these these reps and vendors. Um, but that was a long time ago. That yeah. Was a whole other. That was a, a beautiful time when, when you could. You could do that, but you're right. Anyway, you're right. It's yeah. like this whole thing just becomes, you know, the store becomes very incestuous. Everyone's sleeping with everyone. And yeah. then I, I saw many managers with like assistant managers and stuff or the boss, like sleeping with someone who worked at a lower oh, level and like all the time. Yeah. All yeah. The time. Like I, I recall like instant uh, situations for like two employees on break on lunch would leave and come back and they would be like, yeah, we just had sex in the parking lot. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. I do not live yeah. an exciting life. What is happening yes. with everybody else but me? How is this happening? What and, are you... <laughs> I, never, I never went that far, but I did have my own office and this one uh, woman who I was dating who was a rep, she was really pushing for us to fool around in the office at one point. And I was yeah. like, you're out of your damn mind. Like, absolutely not. <laughs> it's like you watch like TV shows that take place at like real place environments, like I don't know, like the fucking office or something. Yeah. And you always yeah. see like criticisms like, ah, no one just sleeps around like this. This is soap opera fiction, but it's, that's what it's, happens. That's exactly, it's totally true. Yeah. That's, it's absolutely what happens. Any, yeah. uh, any odd soap opera, uh, sex scandals in this book? Not well. I mean, you know, there's some some things like you know, there's two characters in the book are dating, but then they kind of broke up. Uh, but they're still kind of in love with each other. They're trying to work it out, and then there's another girl who kind of like gets between them and is trying to get the guy. Uh, but she's also kind of promiscuous, and she wants to bang the assistant manager, and uh, so you know, there's a little bit of that, but it's mostly just people getting killed. And it takes place uh, in one night, <laughs> right? It's like a one night book. Well, it's, yeah, it's all one night. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's one night. Those are my uh, favorite like books and movies. Anything that takes place like one night, and I love siege yeah. stuff. So this sounds yeah. exciting. So uh, one more time before we end this, what is it called, and how can folks find it? Uh, it's called The Night Stalkers, uh, and it's by me, uh, Christopher Triana, and Ryan Harding. Uh, and you can get it uh, where books are sold. You can go on Amazon and get it. You. Can you can get it on your Kindle, your Nook. You can get it from godless.com. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of places you can get it. Godless.com, you said? Godless, yeah. What, what's that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you should look into it. Actually, it's uh, Drew Stepping, author, uh, an author. He uh, put together this website that is really all about promoting um, indie horror. And so he has worked with a lot of uh, you know the indie publishers to push out these you know, these books, um, and, you know, and a, and a portion of it goes to a uh, charity, uh, that, uh, works against, uh, stopping, uh, sex trafficking. Wow. So. This is awesome. I will, yeah. uh, link to this in the show notes. Absolutely. Cool. All right, man. Well, Hey, thanks for coming on. Did you have anything else you wanted to add about night stocking? Uh, just that it sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's um, a good way to, to uh, scam a grocery store? Give us some inside little uh, scam tips. Scam a grocery store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll go, I'll go first. The, uh, the place I was employed at, which I will not name, but it begins with a W. And if Amazon didn't exist, it would probably own the planet. It, uh, mm-hmm. For some yeah. reason, uh, every night, just like kids would come in and like load up on alcohol and just run out. And yeah. no one would stop them. And evidently, it was more of a hassle to try to like to call the cops and get them to stop. So they would just let them yeah. go with all the booze. So if you're a child yeah. and you want to get drunk, 
Go, uh, go, go to a grocery yeah. store and just run with it. Nothing's gonna happen. Well, you, yeah, yeah. You you gotta be. You know, I'll tell you this as a manager. You got you got to be very careful with the people shoplifting. Uh, you know, because it could easily become a lawsuit. And and if you're chasing after someone, like this actually happened not to me, but in the in the company I worked at, not at my store. But someone was coming in and shoplifting regularly, and they they caught the guy and he ran. And the the manager and the assistant manager ran after him, and he he was running into the road and he like fell in the road and got hit by a car, and then sued the company and won uh and so it's like you're not supposed to chase these people because you could for one thing you could get hurt and for the other thing the person could get hurt and it's just not worth it you know if you're losing 40 dollars worth of of uh ribs or whatever the hell <laughs> wait who shop lifts ribs they do it man i'm telling you <laughs> I've seen it happen to many people sticking like meat down in their pants and stuff and trying to hide it, running out with a rack of ribs, like running out with a turkey. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, man. That Absolutely. reminds me one time this guy was shoplifting and the, uh, the manager like confronted him at the entrance or the exit, whatever. And the guy pulled out a fucking syringe and began trying to stab him. But then the most impressive thing I've ever seen in my life, the manager like, ducked and kicked him like he was some karate expert and he fucking <laughs> went through the glass of the exit door it was amazing that's fantastic <laughs> yeah we immediately respected that man a lot <laughs> oh that's him yeah wow i've never i've never seen something like that i've never seen like a full-on brawl um <laughs> yeah uh shit i don't know if i should even tell this but now, was... now you have to yeah i kind of have to uh, <laughs> There was a guy that I worked with uh, who it turned out that he um, was a murderer. Uh, <laughs> Go on. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, he uh, it, he one day called into work and said, I'm not going to be coming into work. Uh, and the person who answered the, the phone was like, you know, his department manager. And I was the assistant store manager. And she was like, well, why? What's what's wrong? What's going on? And he's like, well, I murdered someone and I'm going to go turn myself in. And I don't think I'm going to be at, at work for a while. You know, <laughs> and, and it turned out that he had actually murdered someone three years beforehand, before this, before this and got away with it. Uh, he murdered a total stranger. He just stabbed a woman who was jogging. Oh, my God. Uh, stabbed her to death. Yep. Um, and. It was three years ago. He got away with it, but he just couldn't handle the guilt. You know, this, he had this whole Dostoevsky like guilt that just broke him down. Uh, but where it gets even where it gets really fucked up is that he was working at the store at the time. I wasn't, uh, and he disposed of the murder weapon and the bloody clothes in our trash compactor. So, uh, and all of this stuff came out in the news. So I was dealing with. For one thing, I'm dealing with the police uh, and helping them in the investigation. For the other, for another thing, uh, I've got all these customers calling and are furious that this murderer was working there. Why didn't we do so? Why? Didn't we? I'm like, we didn't know he was a murderer. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the press showing up, it was an absolute fucking nightmare to deal with. Not to mention all the employees being like freaked out and like you know in tears and like we worked with this guy. I worked with the guy alone sometimes. You know, at, at night, like when everyone else left, we're counting down the money. You know, like at any moment, I guess he could have tried to butcher me. How you know? was but, he? How 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 was he? Besides that, he was definitely an odd guy, but yeah. it wasn't like you know, he wasn't like a he, like he had some kind of mental illness or or. Uh, or retardation or something, yeah. um, you know, uh, uh, like the, maybe autistic or, or something like that. He was very childlike mm -hmm. and strange, but yeah. he didn't come off as like an evil or angry person at all. Um, wow. And, and basically, he what he described it to the police, it was in the papers and stuff, he just said that he went into a frenzy, you know, when he saw this woman because he just knew he couldn't have her because she was so pretty and... And yeah, he killed her, and then three years went by, and then he finally confessed to it. How yeah. didn't you begin the podcast by talking about this? How do you how do you save that? <laughs> it's <laughs> well, you want to go out with a bang. I, guess. <laughs> no, I I it was just uh, it, it was a, a it's, it was just like a dark thing to go through, and and uh, yeah, yeah. You know, like I don't know how much like there's even though this happened a while ago now, it's like you know I was like 
sworn to secrecy by the police and the company and all this stuff for a long time. And so, like, I'm still kind of weird talking about it publicly, but I guess I just did now. So fuck yeah, it. I mean, <laughs> is, is it really against the law to talk about a crime on a podcast? <laughs> I don't well, think so. He's, he's been, he's like in jail now, so it's not like the, the investigation isn't ongoing anymore, so I'm free to talk about it now. So, something like that, is he considered like Chilminated? Is he on hiatus from the job? <laughs> yeah, he was. He was uh, terminated. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's a. So you can't do that. Gotcha. I, you know, but I don't think it's in the handbook, uh, the employee handbook, saying you can't dispose of murder weapons in the compactor. But he might have uh, a lawsuit on his hands. Yeah, he might. He might have a technical. A technicality. Well, that was all really fucked up. Thank you for uh, telling me sure. that and uh, my listeners. Uh, how can, uh, how can people find you online? Uh, they can find me. I, I have a website, uh, but no one really goes to websites anymore. You know, it's all social media. So you can find me on uh, Twitter. It's uh, Coyote Chris. It's K-O-Y-O-T-E-K-R-I-S. Uh, and that's the thing with my name is it's Chris with a K. So if you're looking for me, um, make sure to put that in. And uh, yeah, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and all that bullshit. And that was Christopher Triana talking about Night Stalking. Go buy his new book, The Night Stockholds, out now. He co-wrote it with uh, Ryan Holding. Go buy it! And go uh, support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. Leave a review on iTunes. Say, hey, this is a spooky podcast, and I like that. Five stones. Yeah. That sounds good.